flash warning for photosensitive viewers. It's good to be back. I've got history with this game, it and I, we've been through a lot. When Persona 5 was first released in North America, it was in 2017. That was after a 2013 announcement in which the game was slated for a 2014 release. That got pushed to 2015, which got pushed to 2016 in Japan. To set the scene, all of my friends went on our high school's Disney trip in March of 2017. My family wasn't made of money, so I couldn't go. In its place, after I traded in some games to a kind employee who was willing to give me the best deals, I was hyped to enjoy this game while my friends had left me for dead. And then there was the cherry on top. The game's western localization was slated for Valentine's Day 2017. Ample time for me to be knee-deep into the story, and still have some time to go while everyone else was gone. Then it got pushed back to April. <sighs> I was exhausted. At the very least, a month later when it finally came out, I got my hands on the base version of Persona 5. For the time being, that was my Disney. Now, Persona 5 is a long game on its own, and Royal is way more, so when you sit down to play this game, you're choosing to make an investment of your time. The base version of Persona 5 takes approximately 72 hours to complete, and that's if you're rushing. Combined with a high schooler's schedule, I wasn't even done with this game by the time I had graduated. Flash forward to 2022, the definitive version of the game, Royal, with about 30 extra hours, has already been out on PS4 for a minute. But now it's on everything. With all of that preamble, how does Persona 5 even hold up? It's got its flaws, but overall, when you're looking for a Japanese role-playing game, this one really can't be beat. For the technical details, in short, there was some troubleshooting to go through playing on PC, and I'd rather just run it on a console on most days, but running on a good PC, it looks more fluid and runs more smoothly than ever before. There's just sort of a magic to it on the screen of a good PC that there isn't on my PS4. Persona 5 Royal may flub on the details when it comes to sharpening the edges of its story, but for all intents and purposes, it never stops being a thrill ride from start to finish. One half of this game is classic JRPG, turn-based battles, along with a demon catching system. The series this game is from predates Pokemon, so it was doing Pokemon before Pokemon did Pokemon. One of my favorite aspects about the way the system flows is that amidst all the other neat little design choices, you nearly always have the choice of choosing when to battle or not. None of the random encounter stuff that made me put this entire genre of game down for the better part of a decade. When it comes to the other half of Persona 5, you've got a social simulator baked into your visual novel story. As you live the daily life of a high schooler, you get to know more people that relate to the core or at least themes of your story in some way. If you choose to get to know a person better, that will lead to upgrading your confidant rank, which ultimately leads to perks in the battle system. That's the short of it, but this game is meaty, and if I wanted to go over everything in detail, we could truly be here for hours, but moving on. You play as a high schooler who was expelled from his last school for stopping a rich dude from committing assault. You transfer into Shujin Academy, where you're considered an outcast for your track record. Along the way, you find other people who are similarly outcast in other ways and sympathize with your situation. Through the power of friendship and rebellion, you band together as a group of rebels known as Phantom Thieves who, with the power of the Persona, a Jungian psychology-inspired manifestation of the soul, you infiltrate people's metaphorical hearts and correct their wicked desires. Along the way, you uncover a conspiracy that goes all the way to the top. In Royal, which is again the definitive version of the game with improved gameplay mechanics, all-around fixes, and an additional 30 hours worth of content, you're thrust into a scenario that forces you to question your motives and ultimately say, actually, the new villain was right. Side note for anyone playing or about to play, if you're playing this game and you're trying to get the true ending, you should spend your time completing the confidant routes for Akechi, Yoshizawa, and Maruki. If you don't at least max out Akechi and Maruki and you don't have any save data from before when this part takes place, 
you will be locked out of this portion of the game for an approximately 100 hour game if you're going fast this could just be a tiny bit frustrating i've blabbered on about the bulk of this game there's truly so much to cover within a short amount of time and i think that for most prices and especially on sale and especially on xbox game pass that you'll get your money's worth with Persona 5 Royal. That being said, I do have gripes. First and foremost, the DLC. I have always hated paid downloadable content in video games, and I will continue to hate it here. Aside from just making a quick buck out of its customers, there's absolutely no reason that anything Atlas has packaged as DLC should exist. There's cool new battles, and there's some costume packs that let you play different songs during battles and then DLC personas that make the game easier than it already is. Furthermore, this story is sprawling, but sometimes it misses the mark. I think that by the time you uncover the main villain of the base game, you'll be disappointed. I know I was, because it felt like a cop-out. Spoiler alert, skip like 10 seconds? It's the guy who was going to commit assault. He's a pseudo-Donald Trump. And then you fight God. The main villain of the new segment in Royal is an amazing fix that should have been there in the first place. Knowing that they exist, and knowing that they've probably been in the minds of the creators of this game for a while, make me wonder why they weren't there in the first cut, and that makes me wonder if the answer is money. It is. Atlas has a habit of dropping the ball when it comes to either making quality content that'll make its consumers happy, or just making stuff that its consumers will buy. I got a collector's copy of Shin Megami Tensei 5, the parent series of Persona, and the game was a major disappointment to me. I got a cool bag and collector's items though. The 25th anniversary of Persona has happened, and for the most part, that's been a disappointment too. I recognize that this game coming to all systems was a part of the delivery end of that anniversary, but that's basically all we've gotten out of it so far besides cool promo art and exorbitantly priced merch. I could go on ranting about how I think that consumerism has reared its ugly head and is eroding the core of what made Atlas games good, but you get the gist and this game deserves more than to get criticized for a company and economy-wide problem. So it's time to talk about the art direction and the music. The art is beautiful in this game. In-game models have a cel-shaded edge to them, while all of the 2D art and menus ooze style and show that there's a jumping, moving world in here. I could describe it, but I could also just show you the way that the art dances across the screen, there's page rips made to imitate a comic book style, and a loving shoutout goes to the all-out attack screens that end battles if you play your cards right. These things blew my mind when I was in high school, and they continue to spark joy today. They're just stunning to look at. Speaking of stunning, we have that soundtrack by Shoji Meguro that just knocks it out of the park! Play the track. At its core, the music of this game just bursts and jives. Inspired by acid jazz, everything about this soundtrack says, Ooh, I'm one of the cool guys. I know more than you. I'm a phantom thief. I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm struggling to put it entirely into words just how amazing the music in this game is, but I will tell you that I started listening to the soundtrack so often that I realized it was a problem told myself that I couldn't listen to any of the music until next year unless I was watching the game, playing the game, or editing this video. That's how good it is. There's the funky battle themes, Last Surprise, the normal theme, and then Take Over, the new theme that plays when you trigger an ambush to start a battle. One of the things that makes all of the music in here so darn great is the competent use of light motifs. Meguro makes sure that you know what the vibe of the Phantom Thieves is, so once you hear that theme or variations of it show up in other spots, you're hyped, your blood's pumping, and you're ready to ruin some corrupt adult's career. Flaws and all, Persona 5 is like a group project where everyone involved actually carried their weight, chipped in, and did the best that they could. It's a competently put together piece of art. It's honestly a miracle that considering just how many moving parts were involved in this entire project, and the delays, a vision this strong still came through. 
that's a feat in and of itself. I understand that for some, anime as an entire style and genre may just be off-putting and it may come as a hard sell. On the other hand, if you like video games, you should play Persona 5 Royal. End of discussion.